Super Bowlers recently got a new level and not only are they extremely strong now, they're heaps of fun to use. Let's start with a ring base here, probably the strongest style of base for Super Bowler Smash because the more compact it is, the more value the Super Bowler bouncers get. But whilst this water walk's going on, we will times two through most of them today, but not this one because I want to show you the Warden here equipment and talk about it because Super Bowler Smash is unique. It's probably the only army in the game where you can make a genuine case to using the Rage Gem, Heal Tome, and the Life Gem. I will use the Heal Tome in one of the uh, replays today, so you'll see that in action. Unfortunately, my Rage Gem is only level 2, so you won't see that in action, but I think it's pretty simple why the Rage Gem is nice. But my personal favorite is the Life Gem. Why is that? Well, it gives your troops the extra hit points, which means you can delay your Warden ability longer. Yes, it's not as effective because the healing tome warden ability is insane but i prefer to delay my warden ability than use it quite early on top of that with the life gem you do get the passive dps whereas the heal tome will not so we're coming in with the super bowler smash with warden walked the left side I'm gonna use the king on the top side to funnel and then look at this Super Bowlers are really tough to funnel, but look, th there is no way they won't go into the core. Here, we've used the Skeleton spell to completely mitigate the Monolith, and look at this here. So the Super Bowlers are going to start taking damage with the Poison Tower, but the healers are on them, and I mean, look at this. The Town Hall goes down, but my Super Bowlers are still full health. The Eagle is aiming at them here, not even going to pop the Warden ability. The extra health on these Super Bowlers makes a world of difference. They're coming into the middle now, and the Warden ability will go off here. But still, they've just gotten so far into the core of the base. The King did a great job on the top side. RC's done a great job on the bottom. Uh, you didn't see my Flame Flinger, but I sent it kind of straight into a Tesla. So it got no value. And still, despite that, the Super Bowlers are rolling through the middle of the base. Keep in mind, the Life Gem's not just handy for before the Warden ability. It's still handy for after it as well. So my kind of consensus with the Life Gem, we'll talk about this more throughout the video, is the Life Gem is better when you need to delay your Warden ability as much as possible. Because you have the extra hit points, you'll be able to hang on to it longer. But let's get into a Healing Tome example and see when that's best. Unusual looking box space here, but we are going to come in with the healing tome and you'll see the benefit of it in this attack before we get into talking about it though have a look at this yeti here so i always bring the yeti in the comp and that right there is why because we'll pause it right here we know super bowlers path terribly but with this building down my king can clear all of this the super bowlers have no choice but to go into the core of the base so whilst your warden walks going on make sure you think about your super bowler funnel You'll also notice I am using the Baby Dragon and the Wizard, some of my cleanup troops, to try and speed up this Warden War, because this Warden is so slow, particularly compared to the Rage Gem, but even the Life Gem. Thankfully, I wasn't Warden Walking as much in this attack, so I could get away with it, but that Warden Walk still took over a minute. So you have to keep that in mind with the Heal Tome. You want to do a much shorter Warden Walk. We've got the King on the top side. And the Super Bowl is coming in, and this is the best funnel ever. I'm going to pause it again. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum. Uh, I'm bringing the Log Launch from this one. One, because I don't have enough Wall Breakers and Jumps to get through the base. And two, anytime you see a uh, Invis Tower behind the Town Hall, you can activate it with the Log Launcher for free. Always something worth doing. But now I want you to have a look at these Super Bowlers here. So no Apprentice Warden. No uh, life gem. Look at how much health they lose quickly. They were all down to their very last health. So I have to pop the warden early. But I don't mind that. There's a back end rage tower. There's multi infernos and two ricochet cannons. It was honestly a pretty good time to pop the warden ability. Even if I was running the life gem. And that, that is exactly when you want to be bringing the heal tome. If you're going to pop the warden ability early. It is worth bringing. If not. Life gem 100% of the way because otherwise you're not sure if your super bowlers can survive that long Super bowlers are all in the core. I'm only bringing three of them and they're all still alive at this point I mean, that's how you know the base is wrecked. We've got the RC on the bottom side. She's doing cleanup now Let's talk about her. I know uh, Particularly the pro players are very set on the uh, what is it the royal gem and the haste file I prefer the seeking shield because her job's to take out the back end of the base She's not going to be alive for more than a minute, really, uh, unless she's doing cleanup as well. Her job is to take down the back end defenses 
as quickly as possible. And whilst the extra DPS of the Royal Gem is nice and the extra hit points, I've found that I don't really need them as much because I'm, un I'm popping her ability early anyway. But let's get back into some more life gem attacks. I want you to have a look at this base here. This is a pretty toxic base. How would you enter it? Because there's a few approaches. You can do what we've done in the last couple of attacks and come through the back end of the base of the log launcher. But look, there is a lot of DPS there. But there is an alternative that I'm going to show you here. And we are going to queen charge the town hall and then super bowler smash straight through the town hall poison. And you'll see the benefit of here. Now, unfortunately, this flame flinger was meant to go down here and get multi-archer tower, multi-inferno, and the poison tower. But has instead decided to come and take out what my queen would anyway. So rip us on that. But yeah, queen charge coming in here. You can see why I do bring the frozen arrow as well. Because some of the time I am going to be queen charging. Uh, you don't have to do this if you're not confident in your Queen Charge skills, don't worry. You can get away with this army with just doing Water Morks as well. But I wanted to show a different entry for you all. So we've got the Water Morph coming in. I've used the King on the top side. Going to do one Wall Breaker for him. And then we come in with this Super Bowler Smash. And the benefit of this is we've dealt with the Town Hall. And we've not had to expend our Warden ability. Now we can Super Bowler Smash through the back end. Neither of the Sweepers are going to be on our healers. So you know they're going to do a great job on our Super Bowlers. And uh, hopefully our troops go in here. Now two of the Super Bowlers beat the wall at the top of the base. But look at this. We pop the Warden ability. I would have wanted to hang on to it a bit later. But my troops were splitting. Which is a bit of a pain. But now we can deal with this Triple Ice Golem CC. Whilst our troops are invincible. Much better than... When you go through the town hall normally, having to use a Warden ability then. You can see Flame Flinger, if it had taken out this compartment, this base would have been so wrecked because they would have gone into the core. But you can't have everything. I'm using my RC on the bottom side. Now, one thing that was different about this attack here is my army comp. I brought four Super Bowlers. In the first two attacks, I brought three. I was kind of trying out a few different comps for you all. And the best way I could define the difference is, by the way, watch this RC go crazy here. And you'll see the value of this Seeking Shield in a second. As I pop. Come on. There you go. Look at that. Getting rid of defenses. Taking damage off her. Now she's going crazy. Rip that defensive king. Getting completely and utterly wrecked. But as I was saying, the difference between four Super Bowlers and three Super Bowlers isn't massive with three super bowlers you'll have more cleanup troops you have a few more funnel troops and generally a second ice golem with four you'll just have the one ice golem um, and less cleanup troops so i found four really nice for instance in this one i had two of my super bowlers split and two go into the core so if i only had three that might have been an issue but generally three is stronger because you're less likely to time fail and you have more funnel troops so it's more likely that the three super bowlers go in but if you don't like having a long scroll bar, you don't put a lot of thought into funneling, then four Super Bowlers, so that's the first army I've been doing this video, is more the uh, best army comp for you. Here we go with our four Super Bowlers again, and you'll notice the last attack I tripled with like two seconds left. Same here. So yes, when you bring the four Super Bowlers, you still got a good chance to triple, but you are running the risk of time failing. Now, this attack here is the exact sort of attack I'd want the Rage Gem. Why is that? Well, I wanted to potentially Warden Walk this Expo. Because if I do that, then the Flame Flinger can, pot can potentially... I know there's a lot of Builder Huts there. But potentially clear all of that and get the Town Hall down. That's why I was kind of going back and forth between my Siege. And then it's also easier to deal with this Defensive Queen. Rather than this Warden Walk doesn't get a lot of value. And we have to expend the Head Hunt. Hunter as well and it was a little bit risky if that warden ability pops then we're in a lot of trouble yet again making sure we get the super bowlers into the base using the king to funnel worth noting you want the eagle to target your titan before your super bowlers so try and get the uh try and make sure your titans are down before your super bowlers are so we got all the super bowlers coming going in here bar one on the outside of the base there's always one that walks out right but we've still got enough firepower in the core with the Rage spell. Now I am, because there's a lot of value on the top side of this base, we're coming in with the Drill. Now, you could use the Siege Barracks. You've only got, you've only got four Siege Machines you can take to an army, right? 
So I obviously bring the flinger and the log launcher. You have to bring those and the blimp because there's sometimes you want to do a yeti bomb to pull the CC. By the way, yet again, look at that warden ability that we can delay so long because of the extra health. Nicely done from our super bowlers there, getting the tunnel down. Unfortunately, they're all going to die extremely quickly here, no matter how many spells I end up wasting on them. Um, I completely forgot what I was talking about. Oh, uh, Siege Machine, sorry. So it leaves you one spot where you have to choose between the Siege Barracks and the Drill. And I think the Drill is slightly more versatile, even if the Siege Barracks is a little bit stronger. But for instance, I'm not using the Yeti Bomb that much. So I could look at switching it up because the Siege Barracks would have been perfect for this one. Coming in on the outside of the base would have cleared all of that out. RC does her thing. And that is a nice clan clash triple there. We get through all of that. I have to use the freeze here uh, because I was a little short on time. But thankfully, the base does go down. We've got one more replay for you all. Let's jump into that. Figured I should show you all an approach on a diamond base. We're going to do the classic approach here when you've got no flame flinger value and water walk one corner, then log launcher with the uh, entire smash army through the back ends. I'm just trying to get rid of this air defense here uh, for no other reason than parving and I don't want it shooting my healers later. But I'm going to slow it up and we're going to talk about one thing I haven't talked about too much at this point, which is... Why not just bring the Apprentice Warden with this army? So you don't have to bring the Life Gem. You could bring the Apprentice Warden, then the Rage Gem, or the Healing Tome. And honestly, it's a pretty valid idea. You see in this army here, this is a, yet again the four Super Bowler army. I could drop one Super Bowler, and instead of bringing an extra Ice Golem, instead bring the Apprentice Warden. This is probably something I should have tried. Um, but I'm kind of used to only using the Apprentice Warden with, say, Root Riders. Because when you've got the Apprentice Warden with Root Riders, you get a couple of extra thousand hit points. But kind of interestingly, when it comes to the Apprentice Warden with Super Bowlers, as I get an awesome Warden ability there as everything splits. With Super Bowlers, they're 2400 hit points. A Max Apprentice Warden will get an extra 720 hit points out of it. The Life Gem gets at max level gets 725 so there isn't much of a difference so it's essentially costing you 20 uh 20 troop space to be able to have the healing or the rage probably worth it honestly genuinely probably worth it um so maybe it's something i should have considered i still think i will go with this because i kind of like it and i don't have the rage gem because I don't think I'd bring the healing tone personally. If I did that, I'd bring the rage gem to speed up the warden walks. And also to have constant raged healers. Uh, but just an idea for you all. So for those of you who listened to the very end, we'll get some benefit out of it. Also, this base was completely and utterly wrecked. But let me know down in the comments, what do you think is the best setup for Super Bowler Smash? Do you think the life gem with no Apprentice Warden, so you have a bit more damage, the extra Ice Golem, more cleanup troops in your army is better? Or do you think bring the Apprentice Warden, that way you can use the Rage Gem or the Heal Tome and get the value of that? Honestly, up to you guys. I'll be interested to see what you think.